Our topic today, the topic that we begin is Africa and the origin of major, major religions. Africa and the origin of major religions. Our first topic was Africa, the origin of humanity. Our second topic is supposed to be Africa and the origin of major religions. And this is why we say that any religion that did not have its origin or inspiration from Africa did not become a major world religion. If a religion didn't have its origin in Africa, it did not have a major religion. It did not become a major world religion. So only those religions that have their base in Africa or their inspiration from Africa really became major world religion. The explanation is simple. African people for almost five million years developed a philosophy. In that philosophy we have seen that it's based on past pieces, a worship of the creator, you know, worship of a uh, king god, African god, is also uh, a god that lives on goes to earth, uh, resolves dispute, communal living, and the philosophy of I am because we are and because we are there for I am. So the philosophy that is developed around the Nile Valley, you know, later is detrified to become major world religion. Now, I must say to you here that religion is a detrification of a people's culture. Religion is a detrification of a people's culture. You turn your culture and your philosophy into a deity. Religion comes out of the culture and the philosophy. It's not the other way around. Religion, culture precedes the religion. You know, philosophy precedes the religion. It's not religion comes and then introduces the philosophy, no. By the time religion comes together, there is already culture and there is already a philosophy. So that now gives rise, that culture, that religion, gives rise, you know, that culture and that philosophy gives rise to a religion. So therefore, if you are looking at major Western religions, they will all have their roots, and they all have uh, their background on the Nile Valley. They have their roots and their background on the Nile Valley. And the themes from the Nile Valley will be prevalent in the culture. For example, the Nile Valley is on the equator. The Nile Valley is on the equator. So most of the religions will have the sun somewhere because the Nile Valley is on the equator. The Nile Valley has a water system. So most of the religions will have water in them because of where their philosophy comes from, the Nile Valley. You know, the Nile Valley has developed a method. Most of the people move from the Nile Valley, traveled around the Nile, to settle in the present day Ethiopia, to settle in the present day Egypt, and to settle in the Northeast Africa, what they call the Middle East. So in traveling, most of these people carried food. They carried food like, uh, we talked about alcohol among the Iteso, which is portable. But one of the most food they carried, mobile food, was cows, cattle, animals domesticated animals. Once the African had domesticated animals, then you could have walking food. A cow is a walking food. A goat is a walking food. A chicken is a walking food. Food that actually moves itself so you don't have to struggle with it. So, no doubt, most of the religions of the world will have cows in them. Why? Because uh, you know, the philosophy, the people who started these religions, who evolved, who speak to God, who become prophets, you know, come from a culture that has cows, you know. So it will have cows, it will have shepherds. So when you meet shepherds, you should know, you know that, uh, that uh, um, it is because of the Nile Valley. Now, again, in these cultures, they have zoo types, animals, you know, they have developed totems, around animals. For example, in Uganda, uh, you have a bogo, a lion, uh, a chima, the muscular one, the one chima, the one bogo. You know, these are zoo types. So when you meet them, 
in the religion of Egypt and you say Farco, a man with a dog's head, you say hippopotamus, that is still the system of religion that develops around the Nile Valley. You know, because there were animals on the Nile Valley. There were a lot of animals on the Nile Valley. There were giraffes, there were buffaloes, they were, and then people in the Nile Valley spoke or claimed to speak to animals. Understand that. I am sure your grandfather told you in Nyangore they say, Wakame, you know, I'm sure you have such a stories in all your language eh? of Wakame, Warshosho. You know, and then these elephants would actually speak. You know, they would speak. Sometimes the people would speak to the elephant, or sometimes the elephants would speak to themselves. Sometimes people would speak to the rabbit. Nabubi speaks in Uganda. Nabubi does what? He assists Chintu to go to heaven. So Chintu goes to Nabubi and says, My friend, what is happening? I need to go to heaven. My wife is missing. Uh, no, my cow is missing. I don't know how to get there. Nabubi says, Don't worry. I am going to make a stairway to heaven. So, <clears throat> when you meet now in any religious philosophy, stairway to heaven. Somebody trying to climb into heaven. It is all from the Nile Valley. You know, it is, you have, there is in philosophy something called proximity to the truth. Proximity to the truth. You've got to understand this. If I am teaching here now, you report that, you know, Kiurankuba is teaching at UBC. Because you are closer, you know that I'm teaching how many people have my method and everything. But now, if you move away from the, from the center of, what, of the happening and you are reporting from Ruero, the story changes. You know? It is not I'm teaching, it's maybe I'm broadcasting or I am working or whatever. Then as you move away and get to Guru, the story again changes. The story gets truer as you get closer to the truth. The story gets mythological as you move away from the truth. That is a proximity to the truth. You need to understand this. So, for example, in the story of Chitu and his cow, you will find that when Chitu goes to heaven and he's given food, who assists Chitu to get rid of food? The rat. The rat comes and says, Chitu, I'm going to help you. Please. You know, you don't have to eat all this food, you are going to be constipated, or you are going to burst. So, in African traditional stories, in African philosophy, people did speak to animals, and animals were completely represented in African philosophy or in African religion. For example, if I say, for you who are Nyangorean, I say, sharp, sharp, Nyangwenje, no wenje we. And you have to answer that. It means wisdom has got his own wisdom. Uh -huh. What is the answer? The answer is a snake walking without what? Without legs. Or a snake climbing without holding on to anything. That is wisdom. So in traditional African story, a snake represents what? It represents wisdom. <laughs> okay, uh, explain that. Please stand. That's what I think. No, explain in traditional African story. Give a reference that shows that Satan is represented in traditional African story. No, not the beginning. Explanation by the example. Okay. I am saying in traditional African stories, a snake in Angola, you are from Angola. I'm from Chile. You are from Chile. Okay. But you have the same the name Shaku. How do you answer that? How do you answer that? So you know no tradition. I do sounds. Okay, where is it? Shabu. 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 
one of the religions that springs out of Africa, and that is Christianity. Christianity is a religion of the followers of a man who later became Jesus Christ. But before Christ, Christianity was a religion that followed the law of Moses. And that law is called Torah. Torah. T-O-R-A and they put a H at the end. But we have got that word in Rinyankore. Torah. What does it mean? Who knows? Who knows? Rinyankore, what does Torah mean? Torah? Torah. To give. To give. If you are saying, take this, to give. So, in Hebrew, it is the same thing. It means one who got or one who gives. The law of Moses. So, now, the first, the book of Moses, Moses is supposed to have written five books. And those books are known as the Pentateuch. 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 Five books. And those principally concern uh, the law of uh, Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, I think the Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Pentateuch. But let me first summarize for you the religion of the Hebrews and the religion of Christianity. This is the story. The story says there is a God, a supreme God, and he lives in eternity. He creates himself. God creates himself and lives alone almost with his uh, angels. And then he decides, one time, getting bored, so he decides to create the world out of nothing. By world, I think we mean earth. Because when you read the book, it says the spirit of the, in the beginning, the spirit of the Lord was walking on water. Yeah? So, somebody and darkness covered the whole world, I think something like that. So somebody had created darkness, or somebody had created the water. Now, in ancient Egyptian concept, there was something called the noon, which was a primordial matter, and it was this that the God Ra used to create the world. But in the uh, religion of, uh, of, the, of the Hebrews, of Moses and Christianity, God then decides that he should create the world. And he creates uh, man and woman. No, he, he creates everything in uh, five days, including man, men and women. And then he gets tired and he rests. Now, he, you know, people he created then fail to listen to him or to do his will. Oh, he gave them a set of laws um, which they were supposed to obey, Ten Commandments, and then the people failed to listen to him. And then out of the people that he had created, he chooses, according to the Bible, a small group of people whom he calls his own children. And after spending some time in Egypt as slaves, they are then taken into Judea, and even land that didn't belong to them. And then God watches and protects them. And they go through trials and tribulations, but they refuse to listen to God. Then eventually God decides to send his only son, whom he engenders without a wife, to, sac to sacrifice to the people on earth, so that they can see that God loves them, and then he can fight the eternal enemy, Satan who, by the way, was an angel who lived in heaven, and we don't know why, but they develop a conflict with God. They fight a long battle that lasts uh, several days, 
And Satan decides to leave the, uh, the heaven, or he's kicked out of heaven, and the third of the angels go with him. Now, God sends his son, Jesus, uh, through some mysterious and uh, uh, through some mysterious and uh, what would I like, controversial birth. Because you know, Mary somehow becomes pregnant, although she has got an earthly husband, you know, called Joseph, who the Bible is not quite sure about who the father of Joseph was. Because one gospel uh, says Joseph's father was a different name and traces him up to David. Another says he was a different name and traces him up to Adam. But anyway, Jesus is then killed uh, by people who didn't believe in him in the support of the Romans. And then, after one day and a half, he resurrects. Although nobody sees him coming from the dead, but his followers attest that he has really risen. And after a couple of weeks, he goes to heaven to sit on the right hand of his father. Now his followers begin immediately a dispute as to what he had said and how they should conduct themselves. The religion splits into several parts, but principally around um, several beliefs. One saying God, Jesus was not God, he was just the son of God. Another one saying no, Jesus was God. Another one saying Mary was an ordinary woman, and I say, no, Mary was a virgin. So that dispute uh, leads to fragmentation within the church, but the, most of the church moves to North Africa, the whole of religion, and covers the whole of North Africa, where most of the founding fathers of the church, of the Christian church, come from. Eventually, the Roman emperor called Constantine he calls the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and says, from now on, we will teach God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and we shall reinforce it with Constantine's armies. But that doesn't unite the church. It leads it to divide it until another council called the Council of Chalcedon that happens 200 years later. And this council uh, then comes out with a creed of I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son. Uh, nevertheless, Arians and other people who, you know, who didn't believe in what the Council of Nasea and the Council of Charleston has done continue to have a different view of the church. Now, this church then moves from when Constantine converted, he moved the seat of Christianity from Northeast Africa to Rome. That is why the church is governed from Rome. The first the first believers of Christianity were in Northeast Africa in Judea. The first convert of Christianity is an African minister of finance that is detailed out in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26. Uh, he was the first convert to an Ethiopian finance minister. Uh, then, when Rome takes over the church, it becomes a political church. So the Pope becomes a political leader. And within this uh, realm, we will discover that there were several black popes, including the pope who introduced the Latin as the official language of the Christian church. Now, uh, as to the teachings of, of uh, Christ and what he had said, there were, at the time, more than 200 Gospels of Jesus and these were reduced to, to four at the Council of Nasea. The others, however, persisted. And uh, event, recently, in 1945, in a place called Wan Kamali, they discovered what was called the Dead Sea Scrolls. I am sure you heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered by a black Bedouin or a black herdsman who discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. And in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are supposed to have been hidden from the time of Jesus, they find the Gospels of Thomas, the Gospel of uh, Barnabas, who is supposed to have been Jesus' uh, cousin, uh, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, 
which is a very interesting one. Uh, you can go and look at this in, on, on the internet. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene says, for example, that uh, Mary Magdalene was a favorite of Jesus and he used to kiss her regularly on the day and then the script is missing there. So we don't know. Did he used to kiss her on the head, on the head, you know, on the breast, or well, whatever. You know. But that's what it says when they say Mary Magdalene was the most favorite of Jesus. And he used to kiss her regularly on the day. There we go to go. So you can you can schedule <laughs> Ah now by 10 10,000 uh 10, 10, uh a pope called Urban the third. At that time Christianity had divided so badly there were two popes, one ruled from uh, Cluny in France. Uh, there was a relationship between kings and the church and the religion because the kingdoms were using religion to say, you know, God, we are the divine king, and the church was saying, He is the divine king, listen to him. So the king would say, They are the representatives of God, listen to him. So the religion would justify the kingship, and the kingship would justify religion. Whereas the religion was started in Africa, but the people who now take on the religion uh, become European. For political reason, but in 1086, the Pope called Urban III launches uh, the, the, another religion had come up by that time, which we shall also see, the religion of Islam, and uh, it was mainly a militaristic religion. This one was not saying that you know you need to understand God or we need to explain so that you can listen to him. They were saying no, there is only one God, Allah, and if you are either you are with Allah or you are with not, if you are not, then sword be with you. If you are with Allah, peace be with you. If you convert and submit to the will of Allah. So they have taken over a huge section of uh, the world. And they were, you know, both, they had also taken over Jerusalem, which was now the spiritual center, or which was uh, one of the spiritual homes of Christianity. So this talk called Abba, of Abba, uh, calls all the Christians from Europe. At the time, Europe is dominated by knights. Knights were professional fighters who lived by the score. If a knight didn't kill five people a day, that would be a bad day. If you're a knight, you have to kill about five people a day. You couldn't go home and tell your wife, I have not killed anyone today because they ran away. No. The knight would be saying, ha ha, wait, Pop Abba. You are killing your brothers. You are killing your sisters. However, it is more saintly and wonderful if you can go to Jerusalem and kill the Muslims who have taken over the holy places and desecrated them. If you do that, then it means your sins will be rescinded. That the sins they have committed will be cancelled, and the sins you are about to commit will also be cancelled, and therefore you will go to heaven. So, hordes of Europeans thousands of them, led by princes and princesses, moved into Europe first, went into Belgrade, had a dispute over shoes, burned the whole city down. They were wearing, uh, they would wear armor, they put a, a, a white gown on top with a cross. Then they went into Constantinopolis, fought the man who had first of all called them, called Peter Jason, and they continued with pillaging, stealing and killing, and they reached a place called Ter al Numan, a thousand miles north of Jerusalem, ate themselves extinction in cannibalism. That was the first crusade. Started in ten. The of crusade. Crusade were murderous, barbarous hordes of Christian savages that moved from the whole of Europe into uh, Judea. But the first crusade never made, made it. The second crusade was led by a man called Peter the Hamid. And Peter the Hamid took instructions from the Jews in Mbata. You know, it was the one that directed him on how to go and fight the Muslims. They then came into Jerusalem. That second crusade did reach Jerusalem. And they fight, fought a long war. The crusade started from 1096 to almost 1335. It lasted over uh, 400 years. 
the Christian crusade. In one of the Christian crusades, children of Europe were also mobilized to go and fight the Muslim infidels. However, when they reached the shores of the Mediterranean, the Christian Europeans sold their children to the Muslims, whom they had come to fight. Come on! Hey! Well, Shamis? Hey! Yeah, no.